Hello everybody, my name is Samantha Summers and welcome to Hive Swap Friendism. Now, basically we are this, this sad little, little chess piece man. We have just crashed onto Alternia and all we want is a friend. So, we are gonna go find ourselves some friends. Alright, volume one. Volume 3. Oh. I don't know if Volume 3 is out. I have Volume 1 and 2. You have just crash landed on a planet called Alternia and staggered from the smoldering wreckage of your ship. You are now completely alone in a strange world, desperate for information, for, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you're desperate for friendship. Won't somebody on this godforsaken rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do. You're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? Oh. Our data or Demian. Oh man. I don't know. Both you're both kind of a this guy's adorable. She seems really cool. Why well, she got three eyes though? I didn't know that was like a thing. She's like, I don't know, she could be like a mutant. She was some sort of mutation. Or she could be like a fusion. So, you know, maybe. This guy, he's got a hot dog. And I said I wanted some food. So maybe my friend will give me a hot dog. But it's got legs. And if I learned anything from Hive Swap, is the people here will eat bugs. They will also, as I've learned from Homestuck, eat grubs. And grubs are babies. That's the thing they do. Alright, so, man, I don't know. Our data or Demian? Demian's pretty little and cute, and I love him. I'm picking him. Yes, someone is approaching. A strange gray-skinned alien with a cozy-looking vest. Perhaps they will make for a good friend. Oh, you're so cute. What? <laughs> you, just, you just stroll along some alien and be like, Oh, hey, what's up? Ciao. What's up? Oof. Hang on. Sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking. Rude. I'm a little kind of uncomfortable about this. I'm kind of un uncomfortable about you now. I'll go back to Ardata. Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you are a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of some medical treatment. You're also really lonely and you wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. Hungry, huh? I see what your game is. <laughs> he's really protective of that hot dog. You aren't sure what he's talking about. Then your eyes drift towards the obvious target. That exquisite hot dog he's holding. It looks really, really good. Your mouth is watery noticeably. Just like dribbling all down my chin. A ravenous dog. Oh no! I knew it. You're just like all the rest. Your agenda is to have me relinquish my delicacy. Well, forget it. I have been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy tar mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but you didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want is to make a new buddy, so you don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. You just want a friend, and not my sweet me. Oh. Don't call it that, dear. Don't, don't call it that. No. Sorry. I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful, 
Folks tend to get that greedy look in their eye around my warm sausage. Please stop! Let's call it a hot dog. <laughs> These are odd ways to express the things that he's saying, you think. But it would be rude to point that out. Probably best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving in the right direction. Ask if he lives nearby. I'm not going to talk about his hot dog because then he will cry. So, ask if he lives nearby. Yeah, or I used to, I mean. My place was bombed by drums of, drones a while ago. Look at his little face like, ain't that just the way? Now, I don't have a hive, but I'm making it work out here. Where'd you get the hot dog? You could take someone else's hive. Look at all those hives! Look at them all! Foraging for tasty things when I can. When I can. Oh god, I'm pretty good at it. He looks like he's about to throw some football. Hmm. Talking people into giving me meat products, I mean. You quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friend. You thought you had it rough. Crash landing here, hungry and friendless. And come to think of it, Feels like your arm is broken. Your ribs too, maybe. But enough self-pity. This is about making a great new friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait. Are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we slow it down a bit? See how things go. Not saying it's out of the question. I just think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. I am a, the best friendship material, you little sausage head. His horns literally look like little sausages. I... Okay. Someone I trust, you know. Not just another looky loo gunning for my delicacy. He got out over your skis again. Of course, he's right. This is totally reasonable. You feel sure you can. You can do what it takes to win him over. You have to make a mental note to avoid looking at or mentioning his hot dog, since it seems to be a sensitive subject. Why doesn't he just eat it? And then he can stop being a little paranoid sausage head. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it impact. Don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You aren't thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one. And no one ever has brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some primal level, your current non-hot dog mindset. He smiles. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. All you can see is his mouth. It's a very nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles here and there. A mop of messy hair draped over his eyes. But he doesn't even have eyes. I bet that, I bet that other one that I forgot her name already, I bet she stole one of his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have. You think, you think. He's kind of adorable, really, if you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Wait a minute, you didn't want to start thinking thoughts that are too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. I bet he's like so concerned. I'm just sitting here staring at him. It's like, don't think about hot dogs. He's probably so concerned. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend, nothing more. You should try to speak up about some non-meat related conversation soon, before things get awkward. Dear, it's already there. You wonder about his house. It got bombed? Yeah, you know. Routine drone passed through my hood. A little bombing, a little calling. That's how it goes around here. I was a lucky one. Seriously, these children don't know the meaning of the word lucky. My lucid, oh, my lucis, not so much. He's, oh, baby, he's a goner. Oh, <sighs> you don't know what a lucis is. But you can deduce it was someone important to him who probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide to. The right play is to show, show some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes I think 
I enjoy savory bunch delights in a way of covering up the pain. <sighs> They're so good, though, it's hard to stop. Also, I favor the juicy meats before he died anyway. It's something we did together. How do we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it. Please, dude. Don't bring it up again. You brought it up! Why are you blaming this on me? You didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. You see two faint te red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You have to console this homeless boy somehow. And he'll definitely be your friend. But what to do? I think he's he wants to take it a little slow, so let's just give him a little pat. Not a big old full-on hug. We keep it simple and pat him on the back a couple times. Everything's gonna be okay. Since you're his new friend, or at least working towards earning that status, he has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. his tears and appears to get himself back together. Your friendly gesture worked. You're right. I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knock someone's door because I don't have a door anymore. Maybe I can live off the land for the rest of my life. Scrounging for scrumptious indulgence wherever my, I may find them. No. By rummaging through a awful, awful drums or smooth talk or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I miss my Lucis, but I think he would be proud of me. If I can make it without him, I can survive on my own. I know he would be proud. Maybe. I don't even need to leave the planet. Oh wait, I missed that. Oops. I can't tell test who you can't can't test who you can't find okay can I go back no okay if I play my cards right I can probably live a rip to a ripe old age on this planet without getting caught like hiding in ally alleys and sewers scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going honestly I don't even need to get that by that long since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls so, I think I might be able to make this work. You look confused at the last remark. But again, don't want to be impolite. He holds up his hand as if to tell you not to bother. Rude. I can tell you're not from here. It's okay. Rust bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me prog live progressively longer the higher you go up. Sea dwellers basically live forever. It's kind of crazy and seems unfair, but that's how it is. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful I don't have very long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle into a nice short ride, keeping a low pro profile, taking some good meats along the way. Nothing wrong with that life if you ask me. You understand, it seems like a pretty tragic story, but if your friend has made peace with this destiny, then you might as well too. You offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of conductive seconds not looking at his hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tightly. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of people find my overly possessive attitude towards my media delights strange and off-putting. I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Well, there are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me. No offense, but you are. Drones with vapor, a hornless goof like you and no questions asked. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. <sighs> this child don't know, don't know Jack. You laugh it off. You're not scared, you say. You've survived worst. Worse. 
you pat your broken ribs and wince. Clutch your sore ribs with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. Oh man, looks like that arm hurts, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what we can do about that. Here, hold this a second. He hands you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh wow, he wants you to hold it? This is such a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. You gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. You hold the hot dog from beneath with your fingertips, as if it's a priceless, delicate treasure. Oh, it, aw. He takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. Then he takes off his shirt. You avert your eyes for a moment. Then you realize that's silly. Nothing particularly indecent about this, you pose. If he's comfortable, so are you. Aw. And he puts his vest back on takes the hot dog back from you and hands you the shirt. Here, make a sling out of it. I only have one arm. Couldn't you do it? That should help. I mean, still, it's a nice gesture, thank you, but I only have one arm. He's right, it does help. Your broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. The shirt smells like meat too. You can't tell if you think that's a bonus or if it's weird. You decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves me, and so do you. It's your greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm officially ready to call you my friend yet. You just handed me your hot dog. In some cultures, that's like, really, really intimate, okay? But I may be getting close. You pushed all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much that means to me. That's what friends do. What makes for friends. <sighs> You're so happy to hear this. It makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of the things he's saying are just a little strange. Like maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly. By his loosest, you guess. Trolls aren't. They just aren't. You think that might be his dad. But again, you don't dare ask. Not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? He gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. For the brief briefest moment, you catch a glimpse of one of his eyes. Regarding you fondly, your heart beats a little faster. He puts a hand on your shoulder. You're, you're starting to wonder if all he's interested in is friendship. It's getting a little saucy. You hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship, but really companionship of any sort. But that's moving pretty fast for you. But you're too nervous to make your feelings clear on all of this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest. That's what I'm- Dude! Listen, dude! This gorgeous me product we both admire. I'm thinking, maybe we share it. Oh goodness, you're so cute. I think that sounds good actually. Oh my yes, that sounds wonderful! You're so hungry, and you're beside yourself with gratitude that Demian is willing to share with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. Here, I have an idea. Oh. Oh. It's getting a little... Demian! No! Getting a little too friendly there! We're not even on a friendship level yet, okay? Hold your horses. He brings his, you could just rip it in half. Just. He brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog between your faces with both ends of the hot dog pointing to his mouth and yours. You're not sure what he wants you to do. You can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to Eat the hot dog with him, Lady in the Tramp style. I guess that's where we're going. Alright. No news boops. Nose poops. 
No nose boops. All right. Yes. If pressed on it, you agree to the, that the act is uncomfortably erotic. But you have to admit, this is a good way to share a food item, whilst ensuring it gets split about evenly. RIP IT IN HALF! <clears throat> and you absolutely loathe the idea of letting a friend down. It's completely at odds with your values as a person. You chomp- oh boy. This is getting real, real, real hot right now. You chomp down on your end of the hot dog, as he does with his end simultaneously. Excuse you. That is so good. You take another bite, and he times his bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. It's throwing you off your chewing a bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. But you don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm with him. Might be what a bad friend would do. You keep going without really quite swallowing. As you go, you get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you aren't sure how you're going to handle. You haven't planned for it, and it's coming up fast. <sighs> the hot dog backlog collecting your throat is getting a bit too heavy. So you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag. Oh my god. You cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively onto his face. That's not sexy. Uh, he recoils, absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back. I still can't see his face. He's staring at you with wide eyes. Hot dog and bun bits all over his face. He says nothing for a moment and puts his hand to his throat. He's choking! He points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The Heimlich, of course. That's what you need to do. You need to save your friend's life. You get behind him, put your good arm around his belly, and form a fist. You plunge the fist in under his ribs, trying to dislodge his masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You need your other arm. It really hurts, though. It's probably just sprained. You'll have to make the sacrifice for your friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you'll navigate this tricky, sub this tricky subject once he's breathing again, but you'll deal with that later. Right now, you have to save a life! You pull your broken arm out of its sling and grab your other fist in front of his belly and squeeze! You try and try and try. His face is turning, well, not blue. Deep red? You guess because his blood is rust-colored? Sure. That makes sense. You yank one more time. Your broken arm throbbing in pain. Oh, what? He doesn't have legs and he just went down. A huge gob of chewed hot dog lunch launches out of his mouth like a cannonball. The expulsion creates enough force in the other direction. It causes you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. <laughs> You in turn go tumbling over him, and the two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwheel of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll down the grassy incline towards a nearby neighborhood, towards the street. Luckily, you stop just short of the street, but Demian's neck lands right onto the sharp edge of the curb. Oh boy, I think I killed him. I think I killed him. Your neck lands right on the sharp edge of the curb. After flipping into the air once or twice, you come down right on his face with your big butt. You hear a crack. Damien! You slap his cheek a little. No response. He stopped breathing. You check his mouth. Throat is clear of hot dog debris. This can't be happening. You look around panicked. This isn't what you need right now. All you wanted was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. What? You 
you have to hide the body. You see a couple of kids creeping out of the nearby house just to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've got to find a bush or something. There, over there. Looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the vested shirtless carcass over to the bush. You dump the body in the bush. It's really not convincing. It looks like a dead kid was unceremoniously dropped on top of a small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. Crazy! You about to cover it up with a better... Wait a minute. Someone is standing behind you. Oh, hey. Our data. Hey. You didn't see that, right? Yeah. Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you. I like your nails, though. They are cute. You killed him. <laughs> That's terrible. Why did that happen? <sighs> I killed him. What? I vomited on his face and then I then I smashed him in the ground and I sat on him and I killed him. <laughs> that was horrible. <clears throat> that was horrible. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Oh, I'm so done with that. I'll, I'll, um, maybe I'll play Artada in a minute. Cause, um, cause, uh, I'm so at a loss. That was the worst ending of a dating friendship simulator I've ever had. I've ever seen. Okay, well, well. We killed our new friend. We killed our new friend. That's... Well, that's good. I guess, um... Yeah. We did not save a life. We ended one. We are horrible. Our dad was fine with it, though. She didn't care. She's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll take care of it. She's probably gonna eat him or something. Oh, man. Okay, well. I might play our data in a minute. When I, when I calm down a minute. But for now. For now. For now. My goodness. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. We're murderers. We're dirty, filthy, high blood murderers. Oh. Bye.